Hi and welcome back. Today I'd like to start with a recommendation um, for a new channel on YouTube that I've discovered. It's the wonderful Australian painter Scott Swinson. I shall leave a link to his channel below but those of you who love expansive expressive landscapes then you're going to love his channel. You're going to love his tutorials. They're absolutely wonderful. He's got some really interesting methods. So follow the link below. Right, back to what we're doing today. Um, this is a tutorial um, from a building series that I'm doing on Patreon at the moment. Um, and this tutorial is to show the painting of a silhouette of a cathedral um, against an evening sky. I'm going to start off by sketching the cathedral out in pencil um, onto my watercolour paper which is a sheet of Arches cold pressed £140 paper and I'm using a Koenor sketching uh, pencil to just rough in the outline of the cathedral. It's based on um, Chichester Cathedral um, where my daughter went to university and it's a beautiful cathedral but I'm just going to use that shape I don't need any internal details as this is just going to be a silhouette but because it's just a silhouette I need to make sure that the outline is nice and clear Going to give it a nice tall spire which I'm going to make sure I get nice and straight as the spire will be the focal point. I think that looks fine. Right I'm now going to draw in a few a few trees on either side um, just to um, join up that sort of silhouetted skyline a bit across the page. As you work then if you see something you're not quite so keen on then you can just erase it at this point um, until you get the trees um, in balance with the building. It's important to get the drawing right at this stage and then when you go in with the paint um, you know it's going to look nice. Yeah, I think we're about there now. I think we're almost ready to paint. I'm going to paint the sky wet in wet. So I have wet the entire sky area and now I'm using some raw sienna on the large harky brush which I'm sweeping across going through the building doesn't matter about that because the building is going to be dark so the dark paint will go over the raw sienna. I'll mix up a nice rich strong mixture of indigo now for the sky. Indigo is a good colour, it should give us a nice evening sky. I'm just going to sweep it across the top of the page and bring it down hopefully into a graduated wash. It doesn't have to be too even but I do want it to be darker at the top than it is at the bottom. So I've got less water, less paint in my brush as I come down and the wash is getting paler. Just softening it down. Just noticing that I've got a white bloom at the very top of the page near the clip. There must have been a drop of water 
big drop of water in the bulldog clip holding the paper to the board. I shall go in with some darker paint I think across that and try and see if I can repair it while the paper's still wet. Do that as soon as I've just finished blending blending out across near the skyline. That bit just there, I just want to cover that now if I can with um, with some thicker paint and blend the thicker paint down through the painting. better. Just soften it off down down the paper a little bit further. It looks a bit streaky but hopefully it will diffuse as it dries. If not then I'll go over it again. Now it's time to leave it to dry completely and then I'll come back and we'll paint in the silhouette. Welcome back to part two. Um, I went over my sky because it was very streaky. I went over it again with some water and I put in a little bit more raw sienna and I smoothed out the indigo across the top a little bit where I'd had that sort of mishap with the, the watery bloom at the top. Right, it's time to paint the silhouette. Now I had thought originally when I was planning this to do the silhouette in black or Payne's grey but I actually think that would look too heavy for this painting so I'm going to try it to start with in indigo the same colour as the sky um, I think that just might balance out the picture and if it doesn't work if it's not dark enough then I can go over it or parts of it with Payne's grey or black Right, so I'm going to start using the large Harky brush and I'm going to try and get in the trees first. So I'm just mixing up the indigo into a very thick, almost tube consistency mixture, but with enough water in the brush to help it to flow. And I'm going to start on this large group of trees in the silhouette here. I don't want to fill them in completely. I want to fill them in mostly, but I want a sort of a ragged, um, edge to imitate the edges of the foliage and maybe if I get some little white gaps and sparkles in the, inside the uh, mass of the canopies then I'm going to leave them there and be quite happy with that but if I don't get any if I f fill it all in then I don't mind either so it's just a matter now of filling in with broad sweeps as much as I can of this lower area apart from the important and more delicate detail of the church. I don't mind if it looks a bit patchy. If you don't like the patchy look, then of course you can take a lot more time um, than I've got here to uh, paint it over evenly. You could even maybe wet the whole area first for a, um, for a, a smoother coverage but I quite like the sort of patchy look which kind of gives it some sort of dimension. So I'm dipping into more thick paint and a bit more water to get it to flow. Um, I don't mind if there's some dry brush sparkle showing in places or if there isn't really. Um, this is just as I say, general coverage, but with nice, rich, thick paint so that we have that silhouette look. I think I've almost done as much as I can with the Harky brush. So now I'm going to move on to my Windsor & Newton um, 3 quarter inch synthetic flat brush, which has got a really good edge. Any flat brush that you can rely on will do, any, any, any that you like and I'm going to carefully start to block in the cathedral following the kind of shapes that I've drawn in for the towers and things trying to keep what detail we have which isn't too much but 
it's still the tiny little details, the little points and angles are what makes this shape look like a large church or cathedral. So I'm going to try and keep those by painting in carefully. I suggest that you paint this in you know, fairly flat. I'm pulling the paint down and hoping that that will add to some of the effects of the size and kind of shadows on the church as, as well as it being in silhouette I still you know want to have some sort of a textural look to it too so I'm making sure to keep my verticals as straight as possible and my horizontals as flat as possible If you prefer to paint this in with a small round or something or a detail brush then then go for it. It's whatever brush you are the most comfortable with for painting this sort of area. Nearly ready to paint in the spire. Now the spire is obviously the most important part so be careful as you go in um, I'm going to paint it with a flat brush but of course you could paint it with a detail brush if you want and I am following my line this is why I was so careful to draw the spire in um, I'm tapering off the pressure on the brush so that I get a very fine um, point at the top of the steeple and I'm stopping and looking making sure that I don't go over those lines taking my time to get this detail right because I do think the steeple as I said before is so important and the slightest wobble or mistake on the steeple will show everything else it doesn't matter too much but that steeple needs to be needs to be right just going to pop in a quick flagpole and I think that looks pretty good actually I think that works really well I think it was the right decision to use the indigo and not paint it in black but of course if you prefer the look of a black silhouette then go for it I'm going to risk scraping in with the card because the paint looks just about dry enough that I'm going to get some white lines for trunks and I think that just might help lift that line a little bit more by just showing the light sort of reflecting on some trunks there and I think that that looks quite nice I'm not going to overdo this and if you don't want to do this then don't if you like your silhouette plain leave it plain just put a few in the other side paints a bit drier there so I'm not going to get as many Just with the cut sharp corner and just put a few more smaller trunks and branches in. Just a little bit of paint on the flat brush and I'm just going to soften off where those um, etched marks start. Just soften them back into the tree line a little bit more. just softening back a little bit and finally using the rigger brush and a little bit of inky consistency indigo I'm just going to put in a few birds and that's it that's the painting finished well I hope you enjoyed this um, don't forget to take a look at Scott Swinson's channel um, the link will be in the description below and if you enjoyed this tutorial then why not come and join us on Patreon the link is also below for that thanks so much and I'll see you again soon bye <laughs>